So in this video, uh, I'm going to show you how to make the best tasting bread you've ever had. I call it a Danish loaf, and I'm making it with the sponge and dough method. That's the ferment which uh, you start off with, basically you start a dough. And you, um, after putting that together, you add it to the main ingredients, which uh, come later. But anyway, the ferment you leave for 30 minutes or thereabouts, room temperature, as long as your room's at something like 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And always use the best you can get in the way of flour. I use the Allinson's bread making flour and the reason for that is the gluten strength is much higher in um, in a specialist bread making flour rather than just plain flour. You can make it with a plain flour but um, you don't get the stability of the of the gluten which basically holds the shape of the bread and lets it expand to its fullest extent giving you a better texture so what you see here is i've left the um, ferment to basically ferment for 30 minutes get the yeast working in other words and now i've added it to the uh, bulk of the flour, uh, salt, fat um, and I'm just basically amalgamating it all together here. Once you've got it to a, you may need to by the way put a little bit extra liquid in but that's okay um, as long as you don't put too much in but you don't want the dough too dry that you can't work with it and stretch that um, gluten out so once you've got it to a firmish sort of consistency um, I scrape the bowl down and basically tip it onto the worktop where you can uh, really get to work on it and once you've got it in that state um, cover it with I use a, a bin liner just basically cover the bowl with a bin liner and the action of the yeast in that dough um, generates heat which in turn will make the uh, dough start to rise up a bit. So this is about 30, 45 minutes later now and you can see how much the dough has risen. Um, and you, what you're doing is, is you're multiplying the yeast cells within the dough, it's feeding on the sugars in the flour and the little bit of sugar that you put in at the start and here I'm stretching and basically working the dough to form that uh, gluten so that eventually you're just stretching and pulling it giving it a bashing not the CO2 gas um, out of it because again the yeast continues to work producing more CO2. Once you've got it to a nice smooth dough, uh, which we have done here, you can do one or two things. You can either, in the recipe below, you can make one large um, loaf out of this, or as you'll see in a minute, um, I cut it into two to make two small loaves uh, so that I can eat one in the moment and put the other one when it's baked uh, that is into the freezer for another day and by the way by freezing the loaf once it's cooled off uh, when you take it out of the freezer uh, you can put it in the oven again for 20 minutes to basically ref um, defrost it and, um, and experience that fresh bread taste uh, once you bring it out of the oven again you know that crustiness and that smell of the bread once it comes out of the oven and here you see I've cut it into two and I'm basically 
although I've done it two handed that's because I've had that experience but um, again if you do this recipe enough times you'll come to the point where you can do the same in the meantime if you can't um, use both hands like I am just do them one at a time uh, you can either bake it off in a tin that's a little tin that I sometimes use for a tin loaf um, or you can just make cobs out of them mould them round like I'm doing there so that you've got two cobs round loaves basically uh, and I always when I'm moulding it turn it into a cob first like that and then follow on and get it into a, a elongated um, loaf type shape and once you've got it in that state you'll notice at this point the doughs become relatively smooth I put them on a baking tray with greaseproof paper and then let them rest again basically um, doing what you've done before uh, bin liner over the top and that's sufficient to contain the heat that the yeast is generating to let them rise up to the required um, amount and then what we'll do next is for this particular loaf uh, for aesthetic uh, purposes dust them with a bit of flour just get that old fashioned floury loaf uh, type effect and then slash a cut across the middle like so nice sharp knife you need for that and by this time you will put your oven on 10 or 15 minutes prior to this to um, to put them in the oven and also um, I should mention at this point that when, when you put the oven on I put a little bit a little dish of water in there to produce a bit of steam because you get a nice crusty loaf if you've got a bit of steam going on there and as you can see uh, let it cool a bit and now is the time to have a taste of it and that smell is absolutely gorgeous and the taste with real butter on it's out of this world I'm sure you'll enjoy it Please like and subscribe this video if you'd like to see more and um, give us a thumbs up and I'll see what else I can come up with. Thank you for watching.